So the first thing in this proper form of meditation, it's five parts, is to achieve a state of relaxation. And you will see this, for example, uh, a meditation will start with saying of a mantra, right? Of the great invocation of Om, to achieve that state of relaxation first. You breathe deeply, you let go, then you say a prayer. And when you say a prayer, you are deactivating the fear emotional part of your brain and you are activating the part that's going to think deeply. In the esoteric wisdom, that's called activating the higher mind. If you don't activate the higher mind, which is equivalent in the brain of deep thinking, executive thinking, making creative decisions, then you're not really meditating. So meditation, just sitting and breathing and relaxing and saying mantras is not the meditation. It may be one step of it. And if that's what you need to do for a year, fine. Fine. Learn how to focus. But know that it is in five steps. So the first one was achieving a state of relaxation of your bodies. Okay? Check them out. Your emotions are left. Your physical body is quieted. The mind is lit. It's like you put a little light bulb there, and it's engaged. Then you dissociate with the three bodies and the environment, and it, you take yourself away from the fear, from the natural worries and miseries that you have in any normal life. That's number two. Number three, which is the essence of meditation, you think about something in a serious way. So that's meditation. What is meditation? Thinking. The great teachers are saying our problem isn't that we think wrong. It, our problem is we don't know how to think. So just going routine mental gymnastics is not thinking. Real thinking is real meditation where with your eyes open or closed, sitting in a lotus position, standing on your head or a chair or whatever, it makes no difference. Whether your eyes are open or closed makes no difference. Okay, It really doesn't. How you have your fingers like this or like this makes no difference. Not as far as I'm concerned. You can sit and wear anything you want. Okay, You can wear any jewelry you want if you want. I don't care. The idea is you disengage from all of those things. And maybe they tell you not to wear jewelry, perfume, clothes, you know, just wear a robe so that you don't have things you're thinking about associating. Maybe that's the reason. I don't know. So you simplify everything, you, and then you start thinking. Let's say you are going to meet with someone, and you think, what is the best way to meet with that person? And you think, and you go behind the scenes. What am I trying to accomplish? What is the best way to accomplish that? What do I need to say? What do I need not to say? What are issues that are inside me that may prevent me from doing the right thing? Do you see? It's not just thinking about one thing. You can meditate on anything in your life. That will take you, okay, this is the key, behind the scenes. Okay? Behind the scenes. Not how to drive from here to Scottsdale. That's not meditation. That's just plain thinking. You can Google that. Okay? You can't Google meditation. You have to do it. Okay, it's not automatic. Because why am I saying that? Because as human beings, we're thinking, yeah, that's fine, but how fast can I do it and how quickly can I do it with the least amount of pain, right? Well, that's not where it is. So you are going to do serious thinking about an event, conditions in your life, about books that you're reading, passages in sacred books. Um, most of the time when meditation is taught, the passages are taken from sacred books. Why is that? Because the vibration of those writings are so high that immediately when you engage in them, you very quickly and easily move yourself to a higher vibration. It's just easier. So that's why you'll meditate on a verse from the Bible, from sacred books, from sacred writings of any nation, and immediately you lift yourself. You are meditating on puzzling events, teachings, speeches, prayers, holy and sacred writings, natural conditions. Whatever it is, you are thinking and engaging a creative and deep thinking part of your brain and your mind. And what this does is it takes you behind the scenes and helps you develop detached observation and critical thinking. You see, the key is to know how to think in a detached way so that your own fears your own illusions, your glamours and egos and vanities and all the expectations are not input into your results of what you're seeing. 
if you bring in the baggage of who you are into your meditation, of course you're not going to get to the truth. Do you see how that works? So the whole idea in the first two steps is to disengage the baggage because we all have baggage that we've brought from lifetimes with us. And we're trying to disengage them. Remember the limbic system, the part in your brain that will be disengaged when you focus in the higher mind. Okay? So you are activating beyond the lower mind into the higher mind by that third and most necessary part of meditation, which is meditation proper. You are thinking. Okay? Now, you might be able to do that for a minute, for two minutes. And sometimes I have done in groups guided meditation where they will do a meditation, which we did, Andrea, do you remember, on Monday? Fifteen minutes, and nobody knew it was fifteen minutes. All of a sudden, it was like this. I said, do you know that we did fifteen minutes? They were able to get right into it, engage, and stay in it. You've done it. That's why group meditation is so much easier, because the group, collective group mental energy takes you where you want to go quickly. Whereas when you're by yourself, it takes a little bit more work, doesn't it? It, takes, it does. I understand that. When I do it with a group, I do much better than when I do it by myself. Now, there's a sidebar to that. If you have problems doing meditation by yourself, then visualize that you are doing the meditation with other people. And that will help you. Visualize any friend that you have sitting, and if they are doing the same meditation at the same time, that's even better. Because then you can hook up energetically with anyone, and you know there is no time and space in the world, really. One thought, one linkage, and you are with everyone. Okay, so that is the third step, which is thinking about something in a very deep, in a very creative, in a very detached, scientific manner. And there are steps for that, and I will go over those steps next time, okay? Now, the fourth part, which is also very, very important, this is the part that is forgotten by many, many meditators. And that is why in esoteric and religious communities, you get very beautiful people who are spaced out. They connect with ideas, and they're all over the place. They've got a million and one plans and visions, and nothing is able to be grounded and brought down. That happens. It's not because they're sick and they don't know what they're doing. It's because they're not doing this one step. What is that step? Write it down. Write it down already, OK? I don't want to. I don't know what to write. Write anything. Take your journal and write anything. Even if you write, I don't know, OK? But you can, what I do is I say, I don't know what conclusion I have, but here's what I did, OK? Here's what I did. I thought about this speech that this person gave, and I found out this about it. And all of a sudden, my mind starts engaging. You see, because you did go somewhere when you meditated properly, but immediately when you open your eyes or you come out of meditation, what happens? You forget. So what you're doing with this step is bringing that higher mind connection to the lower mind. And as soon as you connect to the lower mind and it comes out of your fingers in writing, in creative sculpting, in music, in singing, in dance, anything physical, okay? You have to bring it down to the physical. Don't leave it standing emotions. Bring it down to the concrete. As soon as you do that, that little line that connects the higher mind where the soul connection happens is made stronger. And slowly, slowly, as you travel that path day after day after day, you will develop the ability to immediately go to the higher mind, connect with what you want. One minute, you get an idea, and you bring it down. Very creative people will say, it just took me a second, and I wrote a book. It took me just one minute of inspiration, and I created dance or music. Why is that? It's not because they're so absolutely brilliant that they can't, they only need a minute. No. They've made a connection, and once they make that connection, the whole movie is open for them. The whole Library of Congress is open for them at one instant look. Okay? So that's, that's the trick, is to go ahead and write it down so that you are grounded. Write down whatever you need to write down. Nobody's going to read your writings. Don't worry about it. You can even burn it the next year. But write it down, and you will see 
how month after month, year after year, it will really get better. This is Gita Saradarian, and I would like to thank you for your interest in this video lecture. We have books, booklets, and spiritual study courses on this very topic. Please visit us at tsgfoundation.org for more information on all TSG Foundation products and services. Thank you.